All right, moment of truth for our suspension. Oh yeah, we got some droop. Still settling. What's up everybody, I'm John. I'm Isaac. And on today's episode of Cars and Cameras, we are back working on the trophy cart. Last time, we got the bump steer to an acceptable level on this vehicle. It wouldn't have been that bad if we only had six inches of travel, but we have 12 to 15, something like that. We have a lot of travel on this thing. And so bump steer has been very tricky. Uh, so in this episode, we're sending it. We're welding everything up. We need a new place to mount the shocks just because they were kind of saggy before. Uh, we can work on a dashboard, and then all we have to do is wiring, and just little here and there things, and it'll be yeah. ready to move under its own power. Probably won't be today, though. Probably not. So we're going to do that trick we did for the rear by putting a, like a 2x4 or something, strapping it to it to kind of simulate having these mounted so we can check and see what our droop at ride height and full compression is like before we commit to uh, bending metal and all that stuff. Well, we, we've... <laughs> How do I explain this? So we installed the front struts, and they're a little on the stiff side, but we're gonna add more weight. So we're just gonna kind of roll with this. And we're gonna build frame off the top here, kind of little wings that the coolovers will mount to. And later on, when we get this thing riding, with all the weight added to it and everything, then we'll do our final adjustments, and we might have to cut out this piece right here to let the shock lay inward some but i mean it's looking pretty good yeah dude i mean there's there's almost, honestly no way to tell how much shock how much spring we're going to need until we're out there sending it yeah i mean we don't know what the what is it the spring rate is right we don't know what it is so there's no way we can really calculate it unless we had it and the final weight and all that blah 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 we, i like eyeballing stuff don't yeah you? dude that's what we do yeah that's what we do. So it's it's looking pretty good though. I like it. So now Ike is going to work on a top mount for the shocks while I'm going to work on a support piece for the bottom mount. So here are these bottom braces that I was talking about. Basically going to drill a hole about the size of that bolt right there and uh, it'll fit just like that. So I need to mark it, trim it at the bottom here, drill a hole, weld, we'll be good to go. Pretty much done with these lower strut mount support braces. All I need to do is fit them, weld them on. I am relocating the fuse box, which it really wasn't ever mounted, but it was sitting over here on this side and I just think it fits so much better on that side of the cart. So last night I bent our upper shock mount with our Rogue Fab bender over there. It'll do 180 degrees, and that was the first time I did it, and I gotta say it looks really cool. It is. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, so anyway, just gotta do some trimming, then I can weld it in and we'll have one upper shock mount. There we go. Looks great.
Something like that. Driver. Wouldn't be a Cars and Cameras video if there wasn't a little bit of gap building. So we're just standing on check brand. The, check this, this height. I think I have to pull, pull it up. Yeah. So. yeah. Oh, yeah, it's got to go up quite a lot. Quite a lot. Half inch. Stop. Yeah. A little bit more. Forever. Yeah. We're good? Yep. Cool. So it's got to go up about a half an inch again. Oh. Okay, according to this tape, we're where we need to be. Really? Dude, we could totally like make these the eyebrows yeah. with some lights here. Yeah. Look like it's mad and maybe make them red. Sure, let's do it. Sounds good. I'm just bummed about the visibility, but uh, yeah. it is what it is, dude. It, it seems like, I was saying this earlier, it seems like there's one big compromise when you're working on some kind of project like this, especially when you're using budget parts. When you don't have the budget you really need, you're going to make compromises. So yeah. the case with this is just that visibility over the nose is going to be poor. It, it was pretty good before. Yeah. But with those in the way, it's just like, dang it, Bobby. Dang it, Bobby indeed. Just under three and a half. Okay. From there to there. That's three and a quarter. Okay. This is like. Alright, yeah, it's fine. Might be a half kick off. Okay. guys there's not a lot to film here but i have just got through mounting the i think this is the electronic ignition box either that or the fuel, fuel injectors it's a it's a small uh control module uh real tight place you can't really see it with the camera i'm about to hook up grounds and i'm, I'm still kind of routing wires where i want it up out of the way and out of mine and uh john here he is a uh, working on those upper strut mounts. Looking yeah, Ike's, pretty good. Ike's doing the Lord's work. <laughs> Wiring is difficult. <laughs> Not my cup of tea. But anyway, I have these upper uh, shock mounts here and they're pretty much ready to go in on this side. As soon as I figure out where to drill some holes, I suppose I could tack them in and then drill holes. I'll tell you what you do, man. You uh, stack all four do you have all four or you no, only have two? Yeah. I would get all four and, just, and I'd put them in the drill press and drill through all of them identically and then put them in and weld them up. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, and then we'll have shocks on this thing and we should have plenty of adjustability and they should be like the right uh, amount of spring rate and well, all that stuff. We hope. We hope, yeah. Um, it's looking way better than the original front setup we had here. So wiring, front end, is there a way we could get this thing vroom. It's possible. No, it's not. We don't have the fuel tank or the fuel pump. Everything's welded up with our shock mounts. Moment of truth for our suspension. Oh yeah, we got some droop. Still settling. It's better than it was for sure. It's got like angry eyes now. But uh I think it looks pretty good. We have the adjustability now. 
Of course, if we want to move these inwards to soften them up, we're going to have to cut out these pieces right here and embrace this front end somewhere else. But we might be perfectly happy with where everything is now. So we can put that front suspension to bed other than the steering. And the only thing that's holding us back right now, we need more of these one inch inside diameter collars. We don't have any, local stores don't seem to have any. So we have vice grips for testing purposes. But I imagine I can bolt all these up and kind of get it ready to go. We should be able to test it with the steering wheel and everything. So that's what I'm gonna work on. So I cut out this kind of crude looking piece of flat bar and I'm gonna drill holes in it. I'm gonna slide it right over this piece. I'm gonna unbolt it and then I'm gonna weld it all up solid. And then this will be uh, what we mount our pipe to uh, that goes to the steering wheel to. So I got our steering adapter welded up. Well, it's just tacked right now. We're gonna make sure it works and everything looks good, don't have a wobble. Ready? This thing is massive. Yeah, do it. Holy cow, that looks good. Oh, I freaking love it, dude. Congratulations, buddy. Freaking love it. Hey, let me, can I uh, twist on this? Why is that so wobbly? Uh, because the bolts are too small. Okay. You know, in a perfect world, man, we're gonna have a, a larger steering wheel or power steering. Yeah. Because it's a little difficult even just sitting right here. I mean, I think this wheel is a little bit too small for how big Turn it left and right. Yeah, we gotta uh, support this because this front piece is moving and I thought it was pretty tight, so. Okay. And there's some, I see some uh, wobble in this. In that metal. You know, you know how I said that we need to brace up this upper piece? Yeah, we definitely do. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Yeah, there, all that movement is in in this piece which we're gonna have to break so it fix okay yeah uh all right check it out so there's center one turn one turn oh one and a half one and two-thirds turn all right and what are we limited by uh we were maxed out there okay well that's cool it's a big darn machine right here so i'll take this wheel off and take my little uh adapter off weld it all the way up Put it back on. Yep. And then we can put that to bed. That wheel does look a little small. Yeah, we can get a larger one. Yep. This wheel is from GoPowerSports.com, everybody. And so is this seat. Our sponsor hooked us up. And, uh, you know, we just figured we'd give him a shot. I think the seat is going to work for us, but the steering wheel is a little bit small. Of well, course. I think we ought to try that steering wheel because the bigger one, it's going to make it feel like it's turning more. Yeah. The smaller one, if the front end... If it turns pretty good, we ought, probably ought to keep that smaller one. Yeah. Plus it'll make it easier to get in and out. Definitely. Yeah. It's ready to bolt up. I forgot that was galvanized. Everybody hold your breath. We've been busting tail on this thing for a couple days now, so we're gonna call it quits and move on to something else. But thanks for watching everybody. We got, uh, the front end almost finalized. We are right there. Ike, I think you're about to pop in the other kind of sleeves. Yep. Uh, we had to build some sleeves, basically bushings for the... Uh, well, to shim things up, because the the hind joints, the, ball, the hole in the ball is a lot larger than the bolt that we're using, so I'm shimming them up with some uh, pipe. Yeah, so just kind of little stuff like that. We got uh, the top of the shocks mounted in a new place. It's way better. There's plenty of adjustability. We got a support for the bottom shock mount. We got the steering all hooked up with the, uh, with the exception of a couple of collars we're waiting on, but that's going to be quick and easy. And some extra bracing. Can I steer it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, we do need to brace it up a little bit more. Yeah. But just with a vehicle this big, it's just like takes a long time to get something done. Yeah. Um, anyway, we have a good idea of where we want the seat mounted. You got the ECU mounted, you got the fuse box mounted, uh, you got some wiring kind of figured out. So we're kind of down to the short hairs here. Uh, just a few more episodes and I think we will have this thing writing.
What the deuce? Dang. That was like next door or something. That's like on the street. I think someone was sh shooting a shotgun. Scary. All right. That was kind of scary. Yeah. But anyway, we are right there from getting this thing running and riding. We need to order a fuel pump, uh, fuel tank, those steering sleeves we talked about, but we're getting real close. So thanks for watching, guys. Facebook and Instagram at Cars and Cameras Reviews to check out what we're doing in between videos. So Ike, you got anything to say? Sure. Check me out. I was like, it'll be fine. Perfect. Perfect. Wow. I'm tired, guys. <laughs> yeah, I am too, man. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. We're going to have us a nice fire today, and I thought I'd go ahead and kind of mow around the pile, make sure we don't get any embers in the field, and start any fires. So let's get to mowing. Don't you like the boof? Yes. So this is where the shop's going. Right about here. Yeah. I think it'd be cool if the opening was towards the pond. It can clear a spot there so we can see everything, see the pond. That's a big old fire, dude.